How about that Titans defense? Hit, sack, lost the ball. The Titans defense was all over Patrick Mahomes. If A.J. Brown and Julio is healthy, don't nobody want to see this. I don't want to see it. What a throw! What a catch! Direct snap, Henry. He throws in the end zone. Man is wide open. Caught. Touchdown, Titans! Michael Pruitt! Play fake. Man, he'll rolling right. He can run this in. Let's have a little finger roll. Titans did it again, baby. And we're going to keep it rolling, baby. Tighten up! I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Mike Vrabel Show. Titans beat the two-time defending AFC champion Kansas City Chiefs 27-3 on Sunday. It took a total team effort, but I certainly want to start with a fantastic defensive performance. It was. It was a great defensive performance. Give all the players uh, the credit to the players, obviously, and the, and the defensive coaching staff to come out there and execute. And to honor them, we have a Mike Vrabel 12-pack. Six on defense, six on offense. A lot of highlights. A lot Mike. of highlights. Let's begin with the defense and let's take a look at one of the early big plays in this game as Bud Dupree makes his presence felt. Huge. You know, just trying to set up, you see the speed to power by Danico allows Bud to get around the edge, kind of something that we set up, uh, forcing him that way, forcing him to his left, uh, you know, excuse me, his right, our left. And then you can see Bud running around the edge and always looking for that football, gets it out. You know, would love to be able to recover that thing and, and, and really try to, you know, give the offense a, another short field. But it's a great way to get us started right there, and it was on third down, too. First of what we hope are many sacks for, for Bud Dupree with the Tennessee Titans. Let's turn to later in the first half when the Titans make a big play in the passing game. It's the two inside linebackers combining for a takeaway. Yep. You know, we, we gave away the shot. You can see we took away the first read, forced him now to our right, his left, and David Long plasters. And we had talked about those guys in traffic, you know, being able to tip one up there or volleyball it up to your buddy or they bounce it off their shoulder pad. And, you know, that's a great job by David and a good job by Rashawn hustling and being able to get both hands underneath that thing to, to get the interception. He's battling a big receiver there in Josh Gordon, fights him for position to David Long. And the first career pick for Rashawn Evans hustling to the football a takeaway. Good things happen when you run to the football, Mike. Mm -hmm. Always, always. Good things happen when you chop at the football. Titans been working on this, and Kevin Byard was listening. He was, and I think that the entire sideline, as Mahomes is starting to scramble, and we get him on the move again, you know, we'd like to be able to get him there in the pocket, but you could just see Kevin just eyeing it up, eyeing it up, eyeing it up. Everybody's yelling, hammer, 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 and it was huge, and you could just see the, the excitement and the energy on the football field, on the, on the sideline. And uh, it's a great recognition there by Kevin finding a football and, and knocking it out and, and being able to recover it there for us. Matthias Farley coming in and making a clean recovery, not going out of bounds, which is an important thing, a veteran move. He played 44 snaps in the ballgame, did a good job. Yeah, he did a great job. You know, I went in there and executed, and I'm sure we'll talk about him and another few other guys later on the program. All right, let's take a look at some quarterback sacks. Third quarter, how about a little Danico Autry? He had two in the ballgame. Here's the first. You know, and, and, you know, Smith had been playing well, but, you know, that's a tough matchup for a rookie. You know, Danico has length, and he can go over you or around you here. He just goes with the old power rip. You know, great job being able to corner there at the top of the pocket, not getting washed by and, you know, finishing there on the quarterback. And, you know, he's done some really nice things for us, and, you know, we're going to need to continue to have him play like this to, for us to be successful. The Titans have the second leading sack man in the National Football League in Harold Landry. He's got seven and a half. His one sack from the ball game on Sunday came in the fourth quarter. Yep, did a nice job of getting on the edge there, speeding and dipping under around Brown, and massive guy. And, you know, Harold can really bend and come out, you know, on the other side. Harold Landry playing good football for the Titans. And you see 
using the speed to come around the edge. Mahomes, although talented, has no chance in that situation. So again, Harold Landry with seven and a half sacks on the season. And here's the one that ends it. It's another Danico Autry with an assist from Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, the two guys, two big fellas in the inside there. And, you know, again, there's a lot of coverage going down the field, and it's, you know, just a testament to the entire defense. And no doubt about it. There's Long trying to run with it. He was ruled down on the play, but the Titans got pressure up the middle. Ola Adani coming with heat to make him step up. Autry first. And then Simmons knocked it out, but he was ruled That's on the ground. That's a big leg he ran into right That's there. That's a very big leg. That was Patrick Mahomes' last play of the ball game. When we come back, speaking of plays, we'll look at six from the offense when the Mike Brable Show continues. We like to make the head coach happy, so we started the program with defense. But we've got to look at some offense from the Titans. Of course Wendell. we do. Of course we do. From the Titans. You Wendell. never make me happy. Well, I try. We we try, but we did defense. We got to do offense. Let's take a look at your first touchdown. End of a beautiful 75-yard drive. You go to the King Cat and you let the big man throw it. Yeah, we had to start fast. We did that. We we started fast on the first drive, and we got down there and. You know, thought we'd give Derek a chance to, to throw one in this week. And, you know, he'll run plenty in, I hope, for us. But, I mean, what a, what a great throw. You know, Prue sold it there. And, you know, Derek was able to get that ball up and down in a hurry uh, with some great touch. So, you know, he enjoys doing it. And he enjoys doing whatever he can do to help the football team. Wobbles a little, but it's on target. Second touchdown of the year for Michael Pruitt. Gave the Titans a lead they would never relinquish. And then a deep shot coming next. Initially ruled no catch, Mike Vrabel wins a challenge for this 46-yard game. Yeah, I had a great pocket. You know, I mean, you can see right there, there's no leakage in the middle of the pocket. We're going to complete a lot of passes uh, down the field when we do that. And, you know, just felt like A.J. had control um, two steps and then took that third step. And that third step landed, you know, if you see there, one, two. And then that third step, he got the whole foot on the ground. It wasn't like it was a stumble. It was the whole foot on the ground. And. You know, to me, that was a pretty easy challenge. Folks upstairs gave you some good looks, too. Yeah, you know, we just needed that initial one. And, you know, I'd like these guys to be able to go upstairs and, and, and have the have their themselves fix it and, and not allow us to have the challenge. But that's how it goes sometimes. Mike Vrabel, two of two on the year in challenges. And at the end of this drive, how about another hookup? Tannehill to Brown on third down and seven. Took a shot. You know, we need a little better protection. But uh, just a great ball. And AJ, this is, you know, this is the type of football that we're going to need from these two guys. And, you know, it goes up and, and plays physical uh, with this DB. And, you know, you can see that there's not a whole lot of room right there, but that's just playing strong with the football and, and going up and getting it. AJ, eight catches for 133. And this touchdown giving the Titans a 14 to nothing. You know, a great block right there by Jeremy McNichol stepping up in there and, and, and picking up the safety that was blitzing as well. All right, so then the Titans are also going to hit Julio Jones with a big catch on the way to a score. It turns out to be a 20-yarder. Yeah, and, and it's a, you know, it's a six-yard pass that, you know, Julio and his play strength and his speed is able to, to create 20 yards just by drop-stepping and zone coverage, breaking one tackle, you know, two tackles, you know, being strong with the football. And, and there's three and four for 20 yards. So, you know, that's, that's what we have to be able to do. We have to get the ball out quick. We have to get it into these guys' hands and, and let them go do something with it. Julio Jones, two catches for 38 yards in the game. This drive is finished off by Ryan Tannehill. He could have thrown it. He says, now nah, I'll just run it in. Yeah, you know, kind of glad that he didn't. You know, we probably would have gotten OPI there, but I'm glad that he ran it in. Um, you know, just trying to get a little misdirection down there. And, you know, we got to be careful there with the, with the celebration, he, he caught a little toe pick there last year and kind of got his knee a little long there in one of those games. But anyways, <laughs> we always like when the quarterback can run it in untouched. Um, more of these would be uh, appreciated. Yeah, well done. Into the half, like to see Randy Bullock, who's 13 of 15 on the year in field goals, bang home a 51-yarder as an exclamation point. Yeah, you know, I, I just trying to not get too cute down there and. You know, we, we, we got down, we moved the ball, and, and Randy's kicked great for us all year, and it's just exciting. And, you know, the players appreciate what he's doing, and he's taking advantage of his opportunity. Six touchbacks in the game for Randy Bullock. Field goals of 
34, and that one from 51. Titans lead 27 to nothing at the half, go on to win 27 to three. And so now to the important part of the program, it's Delta Dental. Can you guess? I, I would rather win a challenge. I'd rather try to win a challenge than win. This Delta is like Dental. winning a challenge. Can you guess this Titan, Mike Vrabel? Do I get to have to answer now or no, no? We'll go to break. Why don't we go to break? When we come back, we've also got the Titans files. A special one from Amy Wells as we talk about next man up. Stay tuned. Can you guess this Titan presented by our great friends at Delta Dental of Tennessee? Can Mike Vrabel guess this Titan? I tell you what, that looks like a Delta Dental smile. I'm it does. surprised that this guy hasn't been there, but that is Randy Bullock. You're going with the kicker, Randy Bullock. It was the punter. It should have been Randy. He had a, Randy been. had a better game than Brett. So. Well, I, I don't know. Brett Kern was pretty good. Oh, now. he was great. He didn't play any points on the board. So we'll try it again next week. He held. I'm better off. Yeah, I know. Great job, Brett. But the two punts. Fantastic punts. I mean, so good to have him back. Sure. I mean, part of the situational, you're just not going to play I along, know. are you? No, I will. Okay. I will. I mean, we're great. We expect that from Brett. I'm going to be honest with you. We expect that from Brett Kerr. We just, expect him to pin them inside the 10. Just every time. Well, when we're punting from the 50-yard line, I think that we do. Like, yeah. that's what we pay him to do, and that's what we've come to expect is my point, that that's his job is cough and corner, hit it, spin back. But inside the 10 is what the expectation is for Brett Kern. We've been spoiled here because we had Craig Hendrick first. Absolutely. Who was a great situational punter. Brett Kern may be better. If that's possible. But, I yeah. mean, I remember Craig and, uh, you know, Brett, I, I joke, but that's like, you know, go take care of your business and, you know, pin them inside the 10. Yeah. The Titans rely on a lot of people to do their jobs and well. And one heck of a smile. I might he have. has I mean, quite a smile. smile. I, he does. I didn't recognize it either. <laughs> you already know. It's on no, your it's sheet. No, it's not on my sheet. It's online. not on my sheet. It says whatever. What we can talk about, though, is the next man up. And that is a philosophy that Mike Vrabel and John Robinson preach all over this facility. It's been a big part of this season already through seven games. Amy Wells delves into next man up in this week's Titans file. Titans fans came to know Nick Westbrook Aquina as a special teams player during the 2020 season. The undrafted rookie from Indiana played in 14 games and caught three passes as a reserve. This season, Westbrook Aquino remains an important part of special teams, but he's much more of a factor at wide receiver. He's catching passes in clutch situations and throwing blocks on big touchdown runs. Westbrook Aquino is on the field more in year two because he can go into the game at all three wide receiver positions, a rarity. And because he has realized that the NFL is still just football, the same game he played as a kid. That's definitely kind of how it feels. You know, it's a childhood game that you fell in love with and had to remind myself that that's how it was. And I feel like it's, it's worked so far and hopefully it'll continue to work. I feel like the biggest thing is just, you know, confidence, knowing that I understand the offense, I understand, you know, what's asked me on special teams. Uh, and just going out and playing freely and not playing so uptight. I feel like that's kind of what I struggled with last year and just, you know, kind of cutting it loose, not focusing so much on being perfect, but just doing my job to the best of my ability. Taking advantage of opportunities is what the next man up in an NFL team must do. Think about Ola Adani at Seattle, where his sack of Russell Wilson in overtime set the stage for a Titans win in week two. How about Joe Jones with three special teams tackles at Jacksonville? Or Michael Pruitt, who has made plays at tight end every time that he's gotten the chance for four years. Kendall Lamb also falls into this group. Lamb signed as a free agent this offseason and has had to wait his turn in the offensive line room. But when his number was called, he came through. Kendall Lamb has the perfect next man up mentality, both as a player and as a person. I go back to my, my rookie years and my first few years in Houston. Uh, coach Devlin, Mike Devlin, my offensive line coach, you know, he told me a long time ago. He was like, Lamb, don't ever get caught up in being the glamour guy. 
He was like, you know, that might not be your role. That might not be your life. That might not be your journey. He was like, just appreciate what you do. And he said, you know, if you can go in there and do that for a long time, you can play in this league for a while. And, you know, for me, it's whether I come here and I, I want to start, whether I come here and I'm the sixth man, whether I come here and I'm the last lineman, you know, like I stated earlier, you got to be ready at the drop of a dime. Just some of the guys making an impact in the next man up role for the Tennessee Titans. Certainly didn't hit them all. No, it would have been hard, but that was a great piece and appreciate Amy and everything she does for us. And that was a great piece to cover all those guys that have helped us. All right, when we come back, it's time for some Nissan Keys. Round two with the Indianapolis Colts next. The head coach tells you how the Titans need to play to be able to knock them off again. That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Second game against the Indianapolis Colts in five weeks. Keys to beating them presented by Nissan. The head coach going to throw them out. Let's take a look at key number one. Guest stop Jonathan Taylor, right? Uh, yeah, and all three of those backs. And I think that as efficient as Carson Wentz has been, it starts with the run game. It starts with Taylor. Hines is accomplished. Mack, they run the ball with. And this is a very good offensive line, a physical. And, you know, they've run it since the last time they played us. All right, key number two. When the one-on-one -on -one matchups in the kicking game, what yeah. exactly does that mean? Well, that means when you're blocking somebody, it's it's one-on-one. -on -one. Like you can't double everybody, and those gunners on the outside. When you got one-on-one, -on -one, you have to go down there and make a fair catch. And you know, when you cover a kickoff, you're going to have to beat somebody, and you know, be able to disrupt their return. And, and that's what special teams is. Special teams is winning one-on-one. -on -one. All right, key number three among the Nissan keys has to do with ball security for the Tennessee Titans. Well, you know, I've talked at length already tonight just about you know. Darius Leonard and that Colts defense and how many turnovers they caused and, you know, 16 turnovers caused. And so, you know, we have to be able to run with the football. We have to be able to protect the football and take care of the football if we have a chance to win this game. Yeah, you know, the first time they had three takeaways against you and you were fortunate to win that one. That was a mirage. Yeah. All right. So the Titans and the Colts coming up on Sunday. If you don't remember the first game, we'll have a review for you in our next segment as the Mike Vrabel Show continues. A lot of Titans fans really enjoying keeping up with the progress statistically of Derrick Henry and what he's doing. Let's take a look at the Kings count now. So far this season, Derrick Henry with 869 rushing yards. He leads the man who is second in the NFL in rushing, Jonathan Taylor, by 290 yards. So that means, obviously, he needs 131 yards to reach 1,000 for the fourth straight season. And right now, Derrick Henry's rushing total tops 25 NFL teams. That's how well he's running the ball for the Tennessee Titans. That is the Kings count for this week. One month ago, the Titans played the Indianapolis Colts at Nissan Stadium. You, you remember they won the game, but maybe you don't remember all of the details. Here's a quick instant replay. The Titans outplayed the Colts in the first half, but led only 14 to 10 because of two turnovers. Indianapolis had a great third quarter drive, coming away with a 28 yard field goal. So Tennessee led 14 to 13 heading into the fourth quarter. The Titans mounted a drive that started at their own 41 yard line. Four plays later, the Titans were at the Indy 10. Tannehill looking. Firing complete to McNichols at the five. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Jeremy McNichols, touchdown, Titans. Tannehill gives Henry. He's in there. Two for double two. And the Titans have a two-score lead. The Titans led 22 to 13, but could not enjoy a two-possession advantage. The Colts quickly drove to the Tennessee six where their drive stalled. A third Indianapolis field goal pulled the Colts back within six. It was all on the line for the Titans at this moment, and Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee offense came through. 14 plays, 67 yards, and over seven minutes off the clock to put the game away. Randy Bullock nails a 32-yard field goal, and we've got our final. Tennessee 25, Indianapolis 16. Tannehill threw for 197 yards and three touchdowns. Derrick Henry rushed 28 times for 113 yards and caught three passes for 31 yards. 
Ola Adeni led the Titans' defensive effort with a sack and a half. In the end, Tennessee was minus three in turnover ratio, but gained 103 more yards than Indianapolis and played better third down and red zone defense. It wasn't pretty, but it was an AFC South win for the Titans on September 26th at Nissan Stadium. So on Sunday, round two, the Titans and the Indianapolis Colts from Lucas Oil Stadium. We're on the air at 11 a.m. on 104.5 The Zone with Titans Countdown. We hope you'll join us. For Coach Mike Vrabel and our fine staff, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show.